Hello and welcome to Francis's five minute feature. And this is where I talk about a feature or functionality within Salesforce that you may or may not have heard of uh, and some uh, best practice around it. So I'm gonna talk about report types. So report types, what are they? So when you create a report in Salesforce, you get a list of report types. And report types are essentially a collection of Salesforce objects that you want to report on. So when you first set up Salesforce, Salesforce will create a set of default report types, which are basically uh, the standard objects. Uh, and then every time you create a custom object, Salesforce may or may not create a report type for you. But sometimes you want a collection of different objects together to do reporting on. So example in this list at the top, I've got accounts. So if I create a report of this accounts uh, report type, I'll only be able to report on the fields in the accounts object. So not very useful if you want to look at accounts and opportunities, for, uh, for example. So if the accounts and opportunities isn't in the list, then you would need to create a report type. So let's go and create a report type. So what we're going to create is actually four levels of uh, 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 four objects within our report type. We're going to create, put in the accounts object. We're going to put in the opportunities object. We're going to put in the products object. And we're also going to put in the connection histories object. Who knows why it seemed like a good idea at the time, but it's a standard object in Salesforce and it sits under products. But what you'll see is it kind of goes in a hierarchical level way. So um, you can only do it in a, a parent-child relationship. So if you're starting off with accounts, then all the related uh, objects uh, that have lookups or master detail relationships to accounts, you can then bring into your report type and so on and so forth down. Um, so you can't kind of go across the object structure, but I will talk about something like that later on. So how do you create this report type? Dive into the setup menu in the classic uh, Salesforce and search for uh, report types. Then in there, click new uh, and you'll get this page displaying. So first is selecting your primary object. This is the starting object for your report type. So we're going to select accounts because that's the topmost uh, object. Then create a description, label and description for your report type so you can so the users know what this report type is all about. So a lot of people put like the objects that are included in the report type or the business use case for this particular report type. Uh, select deployed and click next. So now we have our account object listed uh, there and then underneath that you'll see uh, click to re relate another object. So in our list, we actually, the next object we want to add in is opportunities. So we click on there and we get this drop down list. So these are all the objects that have a parent to the account object. So a lookup field or a master detail field. Um, or it could be just a standard object. So in here, we've got the opportunities, so which I'm going to select, but also you'll see on the right hand side, there's a Venn diagram. And this is basically saying that at the moment, when we select opportunities, we'll only see um, the, all accounts only if they have an opportunity related to them. So if an account doesn't have an opp any opportunities at all, it won't be displayed in our report, which is quite important to understand because essentially you're filtering the data already in a sense. So we'll select opportunities and we'll fill in everything else. So you can see now actually how, what that impact would have to your report. Because we're saying at the moment that every account record, there must be at least one related opportunity. And then for the products, we're saying that each opportunity, there must be at least one product record. And then finally, the connection histories as well. So if you look at your Venn diagram, if there's an opportunity, if an account doesn't have an opportunity, it's not gonna appear in our list. If an opportunity doesn't have a product, it's not going to appear in our report. So that's really important to understand, but we can change it. So here I've flicked it over. So I've changed the opportunities to um, the account records may or may not have opportunity records. So now we're going to get all the account records regardless. If there are any opportunities, it's going to bring those into my report. If the opportunities happen to have products on them, they're going to bring the products in as well. And if there's connection histories, they're going to bring those in, in, in as well. But if you know an opportunity doesn't have any products, it's not the end of the world. The opportunity is still going to appear in our report. You'll also notice at the bottom, we've reached our object limit. You can only have a maximum of four objects 
in your report type. Okay, so sit, click save and you'll see this next page. Now, there is a feel, there's a button on here that very few people select and that is the edit layout. Now, you're not gonna catch rabies or anything crazy from clicking this button. You can click it, it is allowed. So if we click the uh, edit layout, you will get this page here. Um, and this is basically the layout of the fields when you create the report. So when you create the new report, you'll get a list on the left-hand nav of all the fields that are in your report type. And this is basically the uh, structure and layout of all those fields. So you can move around the field by dragging and dropping them. You can hover over the field and see what the API name is, for example. But you can see in here that I've got three fields all with the same name called total revenue, total revenue, and total revenue. A bit useless. And you know, it may make sense inside your org. You may have different departments with different page layouts, um, all using different fields, but you wanna keep the name the same. Uh, which may be a use case, but when it comes through to the reporting, it gets confusing because you don't know which field is which. So what you can do is actually double click on that field in the layout and change the name of it. So just in the reports, you get a different name for the field. So I'm just tapping on, I know that this field total revenue is the on the IT page layout. So I'm just putting IT total revenue instead. Uh, and you can hover over them to see what the API names are of those fields. So you know exactly which ones they are anyway. Also, you'll see there's a checkbox called checked by default. Now, what this does is when you create a new report, Salesforce pulls in a load of columns into the report by default. And that's if this tick box is ticked. So if I tick this box now and create a new report, Salesforce will bring in my IT total revenue uh, uh, column automatically. So, you know, when you create a report and you click remove all the columns and then pull in the columns that you actually need every single time. Just go and edit the report type. Untick all the fields that are completely useless to you and tick the ones that are more relevant for you so you don't have to do it time and time and time again. Cool. Okay, but we've got another, uh, another little funky little feature uh, and that is on the right hand side where you can see it says add related, uh, related by lookup. Now, You'll see our account structure. We've got accounts, opportunities, products, and connection histories. But actually, I want to pull in some um, fields off the parent account uh, object. Or on the opportunities, I actually want to pull in some fields from the opportunity owner, like their address, if they're active or not. Um, and I see a lot of people creating formula fields to do this. Do not create formula fields. If, you know, in some circumstances, you do need to create formula fields. Um, but a lot of the time, you can use uh, this thing on the right-hand side called the add, uh, the, uh, add fields related via lookup. So what we want to do, if I just pop back, um, we've got uh, opportunities and we want to pull in, say, the opportunity owner, some fields off the opportunity owner. So we click on add fields related via lookup and we get all the lookup fields that are available on the opportunity. So these are all, you know, they could be, as you can see here, it's um, the opportunity owner, it's the partner account, it's a, the price book, you know, so you can pull in the fields from those related objects. So we're going to click on the opportunity owner and here are all the fields uh, that are available to us from the user object now. So we're kind of pulling in other objects onto our uh, report layout. So we select the fields we want and we dive back into our page layout and now the fields are all available to us. But you'll probably see it's been added in to the accounts section where it says up here accounts and you've got an edit and delete, but it doesn't quite make sense because if I pull in the address from the user opportunity owner onto the account section, it may seem to think, look like that it's the account um, address and not the opportunity owner's address. So what we can do is create a new section for that uh, and to put those fields in and we can lay out our sections a little better uh, so that when you create the report, the left nav in our report looks a lot more sensible. Okay, um, so you must speak after me. Um, I solemnly swear to check the report type lookup fields before adding a formula field or workflow to get access to a field on a report. So if you've been doing that, naughty, don't do it. Um, but of course, sometimes you do have to. And that is it, report types over.